Hey guys, Mike here. So we got a lot of stuff to talk about today, and I mean, I'm gonna go into a lot of stuff because you know, a lot of reports came out, a lot of data came out that I want you to see. Something else to pay close attention to, which we're gonna talk about is what these larger firms like Apple is doing right now, because some people predicted something that might not come true, and if that something happened, well, that meant those stocks would build a hold up as well, but I think that's not the case, and I think you're gonna see why. And plus, I'll show you something, Lord have mercy. Uh, the kind of market we're in where somebody just put a tweet out and, and run a stock up like nothing uh, is amazing, especially when that person has like no credibility to do it. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a second. But, you know, starting off, understand what's happening here. This is a report that came out of State Street Institutional Investors Group. It's about risk appetite, right? And so on the chart they put in there, you can see when it's below the zero line, that means they don't have any kind of appetite for risk, right? And so, of course, why would you do that when you can go into treasuries? even high grade corporate debt, things like that. And so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? So you know, this makes sense to me that, yeah, of course they're not big into it. You saw the same thing happen in 2020, but then of course when they do get their appetite on, that's when you get this huge uh, influx going on. But if you look going back all the way to 2020, actually all of 2022, end of 2021, and then now, there hadn't been a whole lot of risk for it. And it makes sense. Now, of course, why else would this be? Well, because you got the deal with inflation, right? And deal with the Fed. And here's the more. Here, here's what's being expected tomorrow. And if you look at it, you can see regular CPI, decent drop. Core CPI, not so much, right? Then you got PCE, nice, decent drop. Core PCE, no drop at all, right? So that's basically what they're kind of expecting here the month over month, which is what, to me, what matters the most. Also, what do you got to deal with? Here's what they're pricing in now in the market. Pause in June, pause in July. All of a sudden, September comes along. Fed's cutting 25 basis points, November's 25 basis points, December's 25 basis points. So 75 basis points worth of cuts. And of course, then by December 2024, they're saying we're going to be uh, down to 3%. Now, of course, that means what they expect. And they're expecting Jerome Powell and his buddies to turn back on the printer, right? Cheap money. Why would this happen? Either we hit a soft landing, which everybody hopes we get, or... Things went really, really bad. And of course, what do you see come out today? S&P Global Market Intelligence cuts U.S. real GDP growth forecast for 2023 from 1.4 to 1.2. And then for next year, even more from 1.5 to 0.9%. So they're expecting to see more uh, or even worse stuff going on in 2024, which could be the case because of the uh, kind of labor market we have going on. Now, what else could they be looking at? Well, let's see here, small business optimism. And I'm gonna put this link down at the bottom because some of you guys asked me to put some links down there. So I'm gonna put this link to the whole thing so you can look over the website and everything they take into consideration here. But the optimism is in the freaking toilet. You can see right there, that's where we're at right now. This is a line going all the way back to the 80s if you look right here. And of course, we've only crossed that line back in the great financial crisis. And then we were coming out of it. And then, of course, we had, we had the uh, debt ceiling issue in 2011. And, but besides that, we went up like crazy after that, right? But we've been coming down and fell off a cliff in 2021 and 2022. And here's the 10 components that make this up. You can pause it and look at this. But basically, what you're looking at is plans to increase employment, which is the big one you look at. Look at expected economy to improve, minus 49%. Expect real sales higher, minus 19%. All right, uh, expect credit conditions to get better, minus 8%, earning trends, minus 23%. So just go in, again, I'll put that link, it's down there in the bottom of the description, click on it, you can go through, the. it'll take you right to the website, nfib.com, and you'll look at this and kind of familiarize yourself to this. And if you're liking this video, guys, please hit that like and subscribe button, that will be the thumbs up right below the video there. Just go ahead and hit that for me, I sure do appreciate it, and all your support. And if you like this kind of content, Think about subscribing. And again, I think it's you know important for people to familiarize yourself with some of this kind of stuff because that's the backbone of the country. That's what it is, small businesses, okay? And so you can only imagine, you know, <laughs> what what they gotta be thinking right now, especially since they bank with small regional banks and they're kind of like, okay, I think my deposits are good, but am I gonna get credit out so I can do payroll every week, that kind of stuff. So just something to keep in mind now. This is what I was talking about when, remember, a lot of people think buybacks are going to slow down this year. And it could be the case, but right now it's not the case. Okay, so buybacks by corporate clients accelerated last week. You can see the big spike up right there. And obviously, for those who don't know who are new to the channel, buybacks are a big reason you saw, especially big tech companies like Amazon and Apple, just absolutely go up from 2010 all the way up to 2021. 
right? And then what I mean, of course, well, if you look right here in the morning news brief right here, Apple tapped the U.S. blue chip bond market Monday as a flood of borrowers raised cash ahead of key inflation data. Uh, they're going to raise around $5 billion, it looks like on a five part bond issuance and they're going to pay above uh, what the treasury is paying stuff. But the, and of course, and it shows that you got 11 companies basically set to take on about 23 billion in debt as of yesterday. You can Google it. It's worth a Google. And this is important because this is a form of liquidity, right? That help drive stocks up. And you're seeing a lot of these blue chip companies, bigger companies who can do this, uh, saying, Hey, we'll pay you more than the government bonds will pay you by however many points or whatever. And of course, people are going to jump at it because it's, I mean, Apple, they're not going to default any of this. That's, that's gold, right? It's almost risk free in a way, right? Like if Apple goes under, we're in deep trouble. Okay. Uh, you know, so of course, people are going to take it on no problem. But why would and people say, why would Meta and Apple and all these big companies take on this debt? And it, watch, they're going to use it to buy back stock because they got, I mean, they got so much cash on hand. It's crazy. But, you know, they're going to buy back stock and stuff, right? They'll put it in, in some other things, but that's what they're going to do. That's what they did from 2010. We didn't know about it at the time, but 2010 to 2022 or 21, that's what they were doing. They were borrowing cheap money, really low, because remember the Fed funds rate was almost a zero. They were taking that and then buying back the stock. I mean, what is it? Apple's bought over 600 billion, 600 billion. In stock, right? Uh, since 2012, I believe it is, and so you know that's that's a lot of stock, and so you know that's what they're going to do. I think that's what Meta's going to do because they see what's coming on with earnings and things like that, and what's going on in the economy. But again, who's the biggest shareholders? The founders, the board, and the top execs. So they ain't about to lose no money, right? They're going to keep buying those shares back like crazy, trying to keep that stock pushing or at least keep it elevated, right? So. That, that's something to keep in mind. And we'll see. I mean, some people said it, it's going to slow down. Maybe it does slow down. But I don't really see that happening because, I mean, I'm, I'm a firm believer in corporate greed, baby. That's what I'm a firm believer in. So I think it showed me right so far. And speaking of stock buybacks, I don't know if I've ever done one before, but Airbnb just reported beat top and bottom line. They're actually down 10% right now, but they ain't going to call. But they also announced a new $2.5 billion share buyback program. Now, obviously, 2.5 billion come on man gotta be kidding me what what did apple just announced 70 billion you know i mean that's, that's chump change that's chump change you got you got to pick your game up airbnb you got to pick it up i'm just kidding i'm just kidding but you know there's more share buybacks how about that i mean that's what i'm saying you got companies now like never done it before they're like man we better get on this train this share buyback buyback train my god that's the way to go right now a couple of different charts here iwm one to watch here right i mean this index obviously you can't get out of its own way and but watch it if it does get a break up you're gonna see i think it moved 186 pretty fast depending on I'll probably how cpi data looks tomorrow but i mean you can see in the past here how fast it's moved up to that level and so 174 to 186 you know that's a nice pop for it can it ever get out of this box i mean that's a whole nother question because even it's popped out twice it came back in because small caps and these aren't small companies they're just compared to you know companies on the nasdaq 100 and the s p they're obviously much smaller but again these are companies that are going to have to somehow re refinance their debt things like that and it may be what's holding them down right now but if they can get a pop it's going to be a quick move to 186 i believe now paypal obviously got absolutely just not i won't say wrecked during earnings but this meme kind of describes what their year has almost been like in a way. Because you can look at that chart. I mean, wow. You know, talking about a bubble bursting. And now, because of what happened during earnings, they're down to 2017 levels, right? And I had to go dig these up uh, because if you look at it, it moved up so fast as we zoom in here. During 2000, let me go to the daily and try to go back again. If, if you look at how fast it moved up during this time frame, it didn't leave a lot of support there. There was not much consolidation during this time period. And this is the daily. I said, okay, well, maybe that's support. Maybe that's a resistance turned into support. But I mean, you see, it went up fast from April to the beginning of 2018. And when that happens, that's why they fall so fast. When they start hitting these certain levels, they start dropping down really fast. And that's why. And so we'll see what PayPal does. Keep an eye on that one for sure. And of course, I talked about gaps yesterday, right? I told you Palantir would gap up. Well, this is a 12% gap. Most of the time you get these gaps is going to be during earnings. There will be some more gaps tomorrow because we got a boatload of earnings on some high beta stocks today after hours. And you can see, I think it was up like 25% a day because they were smart, man. They had a top and bottom line beat. 
but they talked about AI like crazy and people love that stuff and it moved up big time. So we'll see because I think it IPO to 10, so it's still below the IPO price. So we'll see if it can continue that trend up. Just keep saying AI, AI. Now this is what I was talking about. When I said you get a guy on Twitter just putting out a tweet, right? This is at 3.30. I'm recording this 15 minutes after this happened just so you can look at this. And you're thinking, wow, what happened, man? I mean, it must have been something great. And it's like, no. This guy named Dave Portney, I guess he's the inventor of Barstool Sports and loves Penstock, has about 3 million followers. So he, he tweets out uh, right when this happened, I bought 2 million in Penstock yesterday and I already own a ton of it. Thanks for asking, right? And of course, then, you know, I'm not a financial expert, but then you go back to the chart and you're like, oh man, that's great. This stock must be way up. And then all of a sudden you start zooming out and because remember, he owns a ton of it, right? And you start zooming out and you go, uh-oh, that's not looking very good, right? And the funny thing is, Gamma stock's been doing pretty good. So I don't really get what's going on with this one because I'm not familiar with the company, but it's down 82% since March of 21. And if you look, it tried consolidating, but it just keeps going down. And I mean, so yeah, I guess maybe, I don't know how much you own, but that's not looking good. But then you look at somebody like DraftKings, keep this one on your watch. All right, I've told members about this a few weeks ago. So it's got this, this perfect rounding bottom here where it's recovering and watch for sure remember i'm talking about stocks falling fast well you can see over here how it, over 24 there how it went up really fast and then how it came down really fast and it set to that key level that 2440 area and what happens is the reason why these stocks can recover really fast uh and blow your mind off is because all of a sudden you have these volume gaps because they didn't, they didn't have any support or resistance right put in there and so watch it if it breaks 2440 for sure because it, it can rise pretty quickly. And that leads us into earnings. And like today, tomorrow, you got a little bit of high beta, but mostly not high beta, which everybody's going to be watching out for. And some of this will tell you a little bit about what's going on in the economy, by the way. Uh, Roblox, definitely high beta. All the kids play this. My son loves it. Wendy's not so much. I wonder if they're ever going to lower prices. They used to love eating the Wendy's. Uh, Lee Auto, we'll see how sales are going for EV cars over in China. Walt Disney, I mean, that's one. I can't imagine every time I, I see it on the news, it's sold out like crazy. Then you have Trade Desk, Unity, uh, Marathon, Robin Hood there at the bottom, Beyond Meets one. A lot of people like to get into and stuff. And then when it comes to the economic data, well, we all know what it's about. You got mortgage stuff in the morning, but who cares? Because 8.30 in the morning, you're going to have inflation month over month, core inflation month over month. And that's really all that matters, right? So, I mean, that, that's what I'll be here to report to you tomorrow. And, you know, look, if we come in and go ahead and put in the comments what you think as far as uh, your projection and stuff, I think we'll just come right in uh, as it is. And maybe, maybe core stays a little stickier than some people think. But, you know, the market... I don't think it really cares about that. I think more than anything it cares about the Fed pause. I've done multiple videos now of usually what happens when the Fed pauses is the market really likes that because it's not going any higher. And that means we're closer to a rate cut as they're pricing in. And I mean, it, and it likes to do these crazy drug addict type rallies, right? And then, of course, if we start cutting, that means things most likely went really bad or the Fed pulls off something they failed at like 95% of the time, a soft landing where everything comes in just perfect and unemployment doesn't go up too much and, all, and we got inflation under control and all that good stuff. So, you know, and I think the Fed, they, they can stay here and try to, I saw one of them out the other day trying to pump the, 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 the market and stuff saying, well, you know, we didn't say we were done raising rates. I'm like, yeah, yeah, but I, I just don't think you got it in you to do another one unless something crazy happens and this data comes out insane tomorrow i just don't i don't think they have it in there i think the whole banking stuff is kind of i don't know put a shock into them so uh, i think they, they probably are going to pause but anyway i'll be here to pour out stuff for you tomorrow guys hit the like and subscribe button if you got anything out of it really appreciate you watching this stuff and i'll see you tomorrow